Uh, welcome to our session on holistic digital transformation with Skill Future Funding. My name is Leslie Lowe. I'm the CEO for Leighton. Today, we are going to have two speakers to share with you about digital transformation for enterprises. Uh, I'll start the session with uh, providing uh, some backdrop of the industry, of the changes, of the future workplace, and try to provide some prescription in terms of how, as an enterprise, you could transform to become an online to offline business. So the change has been unprecedented. The technology trend emerging rapidly and many of this technology, one stack on top of another to create a pace of change that are accelerating even further with the COVID-19. It took telephone 75 years to reach 50 million users but Pokemon only take 19 days to reach the same number of subscriber base. Clearly, such rapid change do not happen because of one particular trend, a specific technology trend, but it's because there are multiple trends and many of these technology work on top of each other to create that acceleration of the change. Would it impact your industry? No industry would be spared. There are industry that is going to be impact more than others, but even a construction industry is probably as physical as you get as an industry. At least 50 to 60% of the activity would be impacted somewhat by the digital revolution. There's no question that change already happened in many of these industries that are sensitive to digital um, uh, revolution, including telco, uh, digital media, even training as a business. When a lot of conversation is shifting to the digital channel. The future workplace would be different. A big part of the change is the shape of the workforce. For the first time, there will be five generation of talent from the baby boomer all the way to the generation, generation Z working together, although they can be very different between this generation, a millennia and the Gen Z work very differently, particularly their savviness in terms of digital technology and their urge to be more wanting a more flexible environment. Clearly that would change the futures of work. Automation is taking over many jobs and it's clear robot would take over more jobs, make more jobs obsolete. Everything will be on demand. It's an agile workplace and businesses don't own, need to own everything. And it's only through outsource of this demand, it could be financing, it could be resources, human capital, everything can be obtained on demand. And innovation is going to be key in the new digital e economy as businesses need to be significantly differentiated on their product and services to be competitive. So the future workplace 
would be working on more innovation projects that create value rather than just enhance value. And certainly, the marketplace is changing. Consumer is rising. There are this intermediation between the product supplier, the developer, and the buyer. And this would create a marketplace that that communication needs to be a lot more direct, faster. So this future workplace would require businesses to transform. And today I'm going to talk about three imperative businesses need to adopt to transform. Transformation is going to be more than just putting some technology at the workplace. It would have to be quite holistic. In fact, the fundamental that, of that transformation would be how you can leverage on this new technology that enable you to deliver a new type of business model, a more innovative business model that could drive that type of growth that allow you to stay competitive in the market. So there are three imperatives. Firstly, businesses need to go for growth. And to do that, you need to digitize your business, your product, your services. And the workplace need to be digitalized. And customer expect seamless experience. And you need a workplace with technology layout across the organization that supports straight through processing therefore delivering a seamless customer journey and experience. The workforce of the future would be quite different as everything have gone on demand and the workforce need to be a lot more agile. Traditional businesses tend to own everything and owning things permanently is not going to deliver the agility that the businesses need to move, to have. And therefore, creating a digitally skilled workforce that is agile would enable right, that resource scalability, that support, that growth uh, that the business aspire. I'm going to go into each of these imperatives and talk about how you can potentially do that. And I'll be using Litton experience, our own transformation experience, to try to illustrate some of the strategy that we took and sharing with you our experience. And also, hopefully, you can walk away um, formulating your own strategy on the three imperatives that I talk about. So I titled this digitize business for exponential growth. Growth is everything. And you need to therefore create businesses that as much as you could, that your product and services could be delivered digitally. And when we, I talk about deliver digitally, it doesn't really mean that the, it has to be electronic delivery. Businesses such as construction sector, how would you digitize a construction business? How do you digitize an F&B business? They are physical businesses, but it could be done. What it really means is it could be a shift of your product development function such as cooking, kitchen, or the building of the, uh, the, the construction project, the manufacturing of the toilet, the room, it could be done somewhere else. So that meaning, meaning that your value chain, part of it is actually taken onto the cloud. 
and done somewhere else that could be integrated into your supply chain, uh, therefore delivering that type of exponential growth that's needed. So growth is everything. So when you enter into this transformation, one of the things that is very important for you to start thinking about, you would probably have to change some of the conventional thinking about fundamental of doing business. Fundamentally, all businesses, traditional businesses, think about profit. Profit is everything. But in the digital economy, profit is not everything. But I'm not saying that you don't make profit. But the question that I'm trying to raise is, when do you start to make money? So profit is not everything. Growth is everything. When you talk to traditional businesses, we all talk about 10% growth, 5% growth. When you talk to a digital startup, you talk about 10x growth. There's a significant difference in how a startup works and how a traditional business works. So it's therefore critical that you need to bridge that difference because ultimately, whether they are right or wrong, in terms of driving that type of growth, compromising their short-term profitability, they have increased their value, they have secure funding, and they are trying to disrupt you. So therefore, you have to be thinking and competing on the same wavelength as they would be. You might not for your business because it's not a pure play. You might not be able to achieve that 100% growth every year or, or per quarter, but you should at least bridge an inch toward, perhaps in the middle. Your business is likely not a pure play when you transform. That means everything digital. If you are a retail business, I don't think, I don't expect that you should actually go fully online because you can't compete with some of the marketplace. They are well-funded, they are entrenched. What you probably have to do and look at some of the value that you have, that physical interaction and create an online to offline business, engaging your customer on an omnichannel basis and with when you have a physical element embedded into your business, your growth would not be as fast as a pure play player. But it has to be more than what traditionally you, you were growing at. So that mindset change would be critical. And the willingness and the appetite for risk. And it's going to be a question of are you going to, and the more, it might be a situation that you have to be going all in because it's a winner take all market. The digital business is a winner take all market. If you look at the taxi business, there's only one grab. In fact, even the second player, Gojek, is finding extremely difficult trying to be the close number two. And that's for the entire civilization. So it's a winner take all market. And so you have to be aspiring to be the top of the hit, top 10, 20% of the industry. So unless you invest significantly if before the curve, you would not be able to compete with this disruptor. You need a disruptive solution in order to grow at that type of pace. You need to have something different. So, and I'm also mentioning solution, not product. Customer these days expect a solution. Let's say I talk about training. Training deliver knowledge. But if businesses send an individual 
to for training the knowledge that the learner gain would not be the solution that businesses need the businesses need skill utilization at the workplace that led to tangible business outcome so can that training trainer trainee walk back to the workplace with leads with sales order that's what the business wants. so can you deliver that solution to the customer so these are things that you have to start thinking about understand the difference between a product and a solution frequently a product would need to be coupled perhaps bundled with other services or product to deliver a solution so in order to deliver a scalable and competitive business you need to have a different thinking in terms of how you craft your business model so there's this book about from uh, uh, written by Dublin and, and Deloitte adopted it and the book talk about 10 types of innovation the hypothesis is that if you have just one innovation you unlikely would be competitive in the digital economy you need to leverage on multiple innovation complement each other in order to be competitive, to rise to the top of the hips and to disrupt. So if you look at innovation within the workplace, generally there are probably three clusters of innovation that you can put in the workplace. The first got to be your core product and services. Your product, your product system. So if you look at that 10 uh, block the orange block um, product performance means feature and functionality of your product but product system means create complementary product and services so so by combining your feature and functionality of your core product with complementary product and services you potentially could deliver a solution right so a taxi company the the feature and functionality is still sending you from spot a to b that's physical it's not going away but how that services is acquired how that services is ultimately delivered from the time that you book that cap to the time that you make the payment for that cap there are digital engagement between the value inside the value chain when you combine that together with an agile taxi driver which is actually a freelancer technically you therefore came up with a seamless customer experience a cost effective right and that's three innovation if you look at the right hailing business right first the driver because he's doing his own business is probably more friendly than the traditional driver the the, the, the services I'm sure many of you remember how difficult, how, how uh, troublesome it is to try to book a cab when you are put on hold on the line, right? It's really two clicks away this day. And even when you try to get out of the taxi, you don't even need to take out your wallet because the prepaid uh, been arranged uh, on your mobile. And more importantly because Grab don't hire their taxi driver full-time so there's therefore they will be able to get a lower price point so so that's uh uh offering innovation in terms of feature functionality complement with technology 
and certainly in terms of structure and process, how you align your talent and asset, enabling that type of better customer experience, better price structure, uh, right. So most businesses would need to have multiple innovation that stack on top of each other to create that sort of disruptive solution. For Litton, in fact, we implemented many of this part of the innovation. Let me share with you some of this. So we are training provider, right? Um, training provider, in fact, frequently deliver knowledge. And, but knowledge is not skill. So, so we needed to enhance to make sure that skill got delivered. So therefore we adopt competency-based curriculum. We make sure we have a learning delivery approach, which is actually a work-based type of learning approach. Work-based, we take real life project and implement it at the workplace. And because it's a real life project implemented at the workplace, becoming part of the training journey, by the time you finish a project, it could have deliver leads, sales order, if you are taking a digital marketing course. So therefore it deliver not just skill and business outcome. So that's what our innovation is five years ago. Uh, in fact, I was appointed co-chair uh, by the government to create a new learning uh, pedagogy and delivery approach, an innovative approach. Today is part and parcel of our ITM for the education sector. And if you download that ITM, the industry transformation map, what you will see, there are two things that are stated, which we, which I'm part of the committee, and Litton have took that learning approach and implement it and transform our, our product. Um, so, so the, the learning um, um, is called work-based uh, learning. So that's only our product, right? So is that good enough to transform the business? Is that a solution? To an individual, it's not a solution yet, right? You need to integrate them perhaps with a job placement because individual, if they come to us, some of them want to transition into a new career, but if I deliver you knowledge, even the skill, if I don't get you into the job, then you are not getting the solution that you want, which is a career transition. So therefore, our product system, we combine with job placement. For businesses, we combine it with consulting. We call it implementation mentoring. We provide an expert. And therefore, and of course, complement them with technology when to create that type of learning experience that you don't have to get cooked up in the classroom, but rather you can learn at work. And when you bundle all those together, in fact, it creates a program such as, uh, if you might not have heard about it, the professional conversion program, uh, where as a learner, you get hired. When you get hired, you are guaranteed a job. So you actually get trained and placed into a job. And to do that, the government obviously uh, augmented that with a financing innovation, which is the payment for that training and the job placement will be paid by the government. So from a financing perspective, is another innovation. You are shifting the person who pay from the individual to the government. And with that, uh, professional conversion program, 
is actually one of the few uh, innovation that I think have done wonders in Singapore to help particularly mid-career professional to actually transition into a new job. So, so our PCP program therefore have many innovation, multiple innovation, and our digital transformation solution for enterprises would include the training, the talent, the technology to provide that digital transformation. In fact, when we are sitting here talking to you, we are talking about not just delivering training because training itself would not support the transformation uh, solution that you need to have to support your transformation. But it also include um, um, consulting that with the right expert to help you with the transformation. In fact, more importantly, it's a cost of the transformation. So we curate all the solutions that are funded so that you can get that digital transformation done with funding support. There lies, if you look at the title, it's really about holistic digital transformation with skill future funding. So there are other areas that we like channel, for example, how do we deliver that experience? So there are five areas that we curate to deliver that disruptive solution to the market. Uh, even our talent, we, our talent are all industry expert, industry practitioner. If they work for us as a trainer, they're unlikely to be industry relevant because they'll be cooking up in the classroom for too long. And we wanted people that are current with their skill. So we curate industry practitioner who have that depth for the industry to deliver. So, so, so they are our partner. They are our learning partner that we work together and we curate this marketplace, this ecosystem that deliver that holistic solution. If you think about it, there's a platform out there that we bring in the government, we bring in the industry practitioner, we bring in the you as an enterprise, the learner, and we create a seamless connection between this stakeholder to ultimately uh, deliver that solution to support your, your goal, either it be enhancing your career or actually transforming your business. So, so the business model ultimately for most of you, it would be an online to offline business. As I said, it doesn't make sense coming from a very physical type of product delivery structure and trying to go all the way across the other side of the spectrum, which is digital. And if you have not done that, it's unlikely you could do that because your business encompasses physical component that cannot, cannot be removed. So your best bet would be, how do I actually augment them with online activity that create an on, online to offline business and an online to offline business that scale? Because it needs to scale, it needs to grow fast enough to compete with the disruptor. So to do that, you, there are essentially a few uh, things that I spoke about. You need to probably bundle product, right? Either you bundle product with somebody else or you create your own bundle product so that you can deliver a solution to your customer. You likely need to have multiple innovation or else you would not be able to create that disruptive offering. And you need to start eliminating physical constraint in whatever that you are doing whether you are selling, you are delivering, you need to remove and reduce that physical boundary. And you need to start thinking about not owning everything. You need to start thinking about getting things on demand. 
because you need it fast and you need to be agile because whatever you are doing is going to be innovation. And when you innovate, things change quickly and you need to be agile enough to turn. And therefore, your workforce need to be composition of your and your facility need to be agile. So I have finished talking about the business structure, the business model, the digitizing of the product and the services that you have to create solution. Having done all that, you need to have a workplace and this workplace would have to be supported by many technology that uh, along the journey that the customer is going to walk through with you to, to, to have that experience, uh, that seamless experience. So most businesses would have to look at four areas that they need to put technology behind. They need to lay technology to support each of these four areas of business. The first is all businesses, perhaps, other than manufacturing business, uh, Colleen's going to talk about that, um, they are, uh, is digital engagement. So you need to engage with your customer and your stakeholder. So these are skill technology related to how do I better outreach, better able to sell, better able to market uh, in the digital workplace. The second part is that there will be technology on every step of the journey that the customer take with you. And you cannot wait to have that technology only after they sign on to the business with you. You probably have to have that technology supporting, extending beyond your enterprise in an extended enterprise place to greet the, the audience. Uh, so technology such as omni-commerce, sales and marketing technology, self-service kiosks, uh, ordering tablets, CRM, uh, ERP solution. So there will be many of these technology uh, that you need to string them together to create a connected workplace. It's not just enough that you have ability to outreach digitally, ability to have technology that supports straight through processing. You need to be intelligent with all those data that you are gathering from your customer journey, the engagement with the customer. You need to make better sense of this data to react, to capitalize on those opportunities. So there are technology that um, you could use from business analytics to data science to artificial intelligence to support that engagement to create an intelligent workplace. So, so the first three pillar is about better ability to engage, better ability to transact, smarter ways of transacting and engaging the customer, but you need to have an environment where you can work on that do not have that physical boundary to function effectively. So that's a digital workplace. The workplace have to be um, collaborative. It has to be secure. It has to be, so the technology such as robotic process automation that as a non-technical person, you could actually streamline your business processes. You, you need unified communication technology, the technology that you are just using at the moment like WebEx, Microsoft, to create that workplace. And you need to couple with agile uh, work practices. You know, you've been hearing many uh, of your employee that have gone out working remotely, nine out of 10 of them say that they want to continue to, to work uh, from home. 
But on the other hand, most employers also say that the productivity is not as good working remotely. Actually, it's not just the technology. When you put together a digital workplace, you need to have a work practices. And startup been doing this for the longest time. Startup tend to be very small. They spread their people around and they all work from home, partly to reduce costs, partly to gain access to, to talent, not just limited to a physical location. And in fact, they are more productive because they have this agile work practices. Like Litton, in fact, when we, given what we have invested in for the last five years with our type of training, with our type of technology creating this workplace, when we have to go into the lockdown, it was really quite painless. We just stopped the physical element of the training. We go everything online. It's painless. Um, the, the, the area that we adopted is agile practices. In fact, it was difficult to implement uh, that agile practices when we had a more physical type of environment. Agile practices generally mean that you actually have an agile scrum, perhaps daily, for 15 to 30 minutes, your team would be sharing about what you are going to do, what you have done yesterday, have you achieved what you have done yesterday, what you're going to do today, right? So when we have a physical environment, it would always be difficult to get everybody nine o'clock sharp to the office because for various reasons, right? So you can never start in time. But when everybody have to work from home, there's no longer any excuse, right? There's no traffic jam and nine o'clock you have to be there and you're given five minutes to talk about what you have achieved yesterday, what you're going to achieve today. And actually there's no place to hide. <laughs> if you are not performing, you are not working, you will find out the next day. And because it's under a small team basis, it's a team type of environment and digitally you are connected, working and exchanging information, communicating even better than physical environment. Because even physical, if I have an office, I still have to walk a few hundred, a couple of hundred meter, um, not hundred meter, I, yeah, still, I still have to walk into another room. But in this situation, I don't. It's just a click of a button. I get the whole team on and discuss about a particular topic because they are all connected, right? So a digital workplace coupled with agile practices would produce a more productive workplace. And more importantly, now the way you pull together the resources is no longer physically bound. And every country has its own wage structure. So why do I actually hire somebody locally when actually there's no distance away? <laughs> it's no longer even two hours away, right? They are just connected. So hopefully they are in the same time zone. And they are just like next door to you. It's no different. So with that, your whole cost structure, because you don't, when you remove that physical boundary, you are going to have a lot of resources available to you to, to, to support your, your, your workplace. So just to sum it up, uh, essentially, it needs to be holistic. It needs to be front office, it needs to be middle office, it needs to be back office, and you need to lay out across the entire organization a digital infrastructure and practices so that you can work seamlessly without the physical boundaries. So how Litton deliver that uh, uh, solution? Because you are trying to implement solution across the various organizations, the support to deliver that digital workplace. You need a digital marketing 
campaign ex to be executed. You need your salespeople to be digital sales oriented rather than traditional sales. It's very different when you are a digital salesperson because most of your conversation happen digitally rather than physically. Right? So you have slightly different skill set. So they will be you need to transform therefore your sales and marketing function for them to work differently. You need to obviously put technology. You need to put intelligent uh, create data model. You need to put the infrastructure. It doesn't look like you're going to have one to two projects. You're going to have, if I just, and most of the item that I stated on this slide are essential. It's not a choice, right? Because if you take away any of this piece, you're not going to have a seamless operation. So can you therefore implement all this technology with a consultant like what you traditionally do? Traditionally, we outsource a lot, traditional businesses. You outsource marketing to a digital marketing agency. You outsource implementation of ERP system to a system integrator. But you no longer have that luxury. Firstly, it takes too long to get somebody else to do it. In fact, you should self-service your implementation. So we created, um, our offering, our learning delivery is different. Our learning delivery actually include training and mentoring. So when you walk through the journey, you still need to get that training. You need, let's say we talk about digital marketing uh, project. You still would need to learn how to use Facebook, how to use Google, how to draft a digital marketing campaign, how to launch it. But knowing that doesn't mean that you're getting your outcome because you need to, to, imp, to use that to apply it to a real life project. So normally in a 60 hours training on digital marketing, maybe the first 20 hours, you would basically go through combination of uh, e-learning class, what we call flip class, which is to clarify any concept that unclear that come through the, uh, the, the e-learning. But the second half of the project, we break away from that lecturing, that uh, training, that e-learning into personalized mentoring. So if you come from the, the company, we would say, take up a real life project for your company. They would then take up, then we'll handhold them on that implementation by creating that campaign, execute that campaign, and also monitor that campaign, measure it for them. Right? But we are a mentor because the learner been taught how to do it, but this is the first time they do it. Somebody need to ensure that they apply the concept correctly. And also, I think businesses need also the expert input. The expert will be able to provide that expert input. And so, therefore, our learning pedagogy delivers two things. First is that we scale up less compared to a traditional marketing agency because marketing agency take a position that I'll do everything for you. So they are not going to scale you up, right? But we would have more training hours for sure compared to chill marketing agency. We'll train you up, scale you up, but we are also as much a consultant that help you to implement what you learn on a real life project just like a digital marketing consult agency. So with both of them, um, we call that a self-service implementation uh, with mentoring support, essentially. That's our, our solution, which really combine training with consulting to deliver the tangible outcome that you have. So through that, in a way we are delivering uh, all those solutions using this 
uh, training and implementation methodology to deliver that tangible outcome for you, it could be you want to create a digital workplace. There are three to four modules that we pull together to enable you to have that skill and also implement that digital workplace as an example. So I spoke about the, the, the type of technology that you need to lay across your organization to deliver that seamless customer journey. I also talked about how we can deliver the skill that you need, how we can mentor you to implement those digital solutions required for your workplace. So the third would be really about your workforce. At the end of the day, you come up with uh, the business model, you implement the technology, but to do all that, you need a skilled workforce, and particularly a workforce that has digital skill. So there's been a skill shift, and this chart uh, shared by McKinsey talk about future job. And future job would have some key skill. Technology skill is more than 50% of most future job. There will be a growth of 50% of this uh, technology skill. Uh, technology skill includes some basic digital skill, such as doing a, a data analytic tool. It doesn't mean that technology skill has to be a skill that's needed by technical people but also for business people, now they need more technology skill. If I'm an accountant, in the past, it's okay that I know spreadsheet, it's the technology that I know, but today, if you're an accountant that do not know data analytics, your days are number. It's not just technology skill. Technology skill itself is insufficient. When you, work on innovative project, innovation project, a big part of the project is actually require a combination of an optimum balance of technology and uh, 21st century soft skill. These are quite different skill from traditional soft skill that we are, we, are, we are used to. This skill include like design thinking skill, how do you conceptualize, create idea, how do you actually manage a project? The old waterfall project management approach no longer work. You need to use, go into agile, scrum, that type of project management skill. You need to look at collaborative, uh, you need to have collaborative skill. In fact, because a lot of innovation project require uh, working in group, in team. So effectively, uh, cross-cultural skill, empathy, uh, all the skills becoming critical. So that, so therefore it's not a surprise that you come in a close second to augment technology for the future ready of the job, the talent. So future talents are, would have this attribute. Firstly, they are multidisciplinary. It's no longer enough to just know one thing. In fact, that's the biggest thing that, and the most difficult thing that uh, we did when we transformed from uh, previously. Fundamentally, we had to change many jobs within our company. Uh, like for example, a salesperson has to be half a digital marketer now with us because we combine sales and marketing into a single team. Uh, sales is marketing, marketing is sales in the digital world. Uh, there's no such thing as my job is to deliver you a lead. If I'm talking from marketing perspective, sales, you take it over to convert because the sales happen as lead and sales together when you put them into a shopping cart. So there's, there's very little different. So we have to restructure, right? So we have to correspondingly upskill the sales people to have better marketing skill, marketing people to have better skill, to have better sales skill. So um, 
our delivery people, our trainer, the one who trained, the one who managed project uh, learning, they're all in a single function. So the many, many pockets of uh, the job is going to be converged. So therefore, to be future ready, you need to be multidisciplinary. And clearly, you need to be digital ready. You need to have an innovation mindset. And if you are multidisciplinary, you are also an innovator. It's likely that you are agile. And to do all that, you need to be a lifelong learner. So for Litton, actually, we changed our value statement uh, five years ago from that traditional 10 value that we aspire to have within our people into only three. Learn, innovate, and grow. So if you are not a keen learner, you unlikely will get into the company and you will not survive because as a practice, we allocate 10% of our time for structure, training, and peer-to-peer -peer learning. That's Monday morning. Nobody can do anything other than learning. The whole Monday morning, we allocate for that. So that's the 10% that we allocate for training to ensure that learning happens. And because as a business, we have so many new consolidated job roles, if we don't actually scale out our people to be able to support those job roles, uh, we therefore have to increase significantly what we allocate for training. Secondly, it's about innovation. It's about doing things differently. And if we do, if we learn and we innovate, we'll grow as a business. So, so in fact, in terms of deep skill and individual, like an accountant, we talk about accounting. The person needs to be half a data analyst, uh, a data scientist in many jobs, right? So a risk manager, you are half a data scientist. Then you become a digital risk manager. Uh, and you need broad competency as well. So these are the four digital skill domains, depending on your job. But generally, you need, you need ability to work uh, agile innovation skill. You need better ability to make sense of data, data analytics skill. You need to have better ability to engage uh, stakeholders uh, digitally. You also need to implement and leverage on digital technology across the board. So every job, there will be certain number, amount of needs that is needed on these four core digital scales. So we have curated uh, a comprehensive suite of uh, training from training an individual over two days to give them uh, appreciation of all the technology. So this is our two days uh, training that cover almost everything that they need to know about digital skill, digital economy, digital technology. And we also embedded the uh, digital workplace skill, like implementing Microsoft team within your organization. And this is a program that uh, SkillFuture endorses, and it only costs $50 per head, uh, with 95% funded by uh, SkillFuture Singapore. So for business professional, we provide training on digital business, digital marketing, agile innovation, uh, digital application implementation, and data analytics. For technical professional, uh, we provide training on software development, data science, artificial intelligence, digital cloud infrastructure, and cybersecurity. So I have uh, finished the third portion of the transformation in imperative that you as an organization need to transform your workforce, need to inject digital skill into most of your job role, and uh, whether they are technical professional, business professional, they has, there will be an increase of skill that they need. It's no longer the 4% uh, of their time that you will be able to invest in training. Uh, you probably have to 5 to 10 times of that uh, into perhaps 60 to 120 hours of training. 
for them to be able to function and deliver on that job. So the good thing is that I think uh, Singapore government have done a great great job actually pulling together uh, training capability um, to support that. So today, uh, given our transformation, we are no longer just a training provider. We are actually a digital learning and talent platform. Um, we, our mission is a future ready talent and enterprises for the new digital economy. And our solution is more than just training. We call that digital skills class, but also implement digital solution and provide just in time digital talent for businesses. And um, we have programmed that structure to allow rapid digital transformation for your organization. So we have put together some program. Uh, we launched it during the COVID-19 because whatever that I spoke about, six to nine months uh, implementation to put in all this technology that I talked about, it's a long time, it's a lifetime, six to nine months. Nobody has six, that type of time. And so we came up with this program that enable you, it's almost like a starter pack to get the pieces implemented in 30 days. Uh, first, to start, you always need a digital transformation plan. We can get that done in, in six days. Uh, we can share with you how you can get that done. Secondly, you definitely need to build a digital workplace. We can get that done in seven days. After that, you need to launch an online sales again in seven days. Then you need to have an intelligent workplace foundation. So that's 10 days. Um, let me drill into one or two of that so that uh, you could see how is how this program is being carried out. Because if you look at what we talk about here, we are talking about business outcome. We are talking about you as a business launch your online sales, not getting your people trained in seven days. Launch. You need to build your digital workplace in seven days, right? So in seven days, you actually are fully connected in your workplace. So we are delivering tangible outcome. But how do we do that? Right? Let's drill into digital transformation plan in six days. How do we help you to do it? So this is actually a 60 hours uh, training, guided training, but the face-to-face -face hour is 20 hours and you can execute that in seven days, uh, working days. So the way we start is we need to scale you up first on uh, what is the digital economy all about? Today you have here from, from me for an hour. Uh, in fact, that's part of what we talk about in the digital transformation bootcamp to lay out the, the digital business, right? I talk about the model, I talk about what you need to do, I talk about all that. That's just one hour, but you obviously need to drill in to learn more things, right? So we have eight hours allocated that would get you into knowing a little bit more of this technology, each of the technology that I talk about, what is it all about. We also drill into how do you create that business model? It's actually a lean canvas and as well as the 10 type of innovation. So I share with you the 10 type of innovation, but when you come up with your business model, you would implement it under this lean canvas uh, model. Um, and so you are, we are actually scaling you up. We would share with you so that you know how to create this, this, this uh, link canvas model for your business. And then you have a lot of uh, e-learning that you can do to deepen your, your skill because in the eight hours, we throw a lot on the table. You probably need to internalize drill deeper into each of them. And when you come back, you actually would have a transformation plan. Uh, and you would enter into uh, what we call a transformation insight session. 
which I will chair that session. And you would present, you'll be given an hour to present your, your transformation plan based on the Lean Canvas model. And there are only four to five companies in each of this session. Each of the company get one hour and you would have peer-to-peer -peer input. And you also have industry practitioner mentor, right? So let's say you're a manufacturing company, you would have expert like Colleen, our next speaker, mentoring you on how are you going to put together the business model, right? It's not just a model, it's really the industry insight that uh, we can provide that, our mentor would provide that support. So, so you get all the input feedback from myself, from the transformation mentor, from your peer, you go back, you have another 20 hours that work on that plan. Then you come back, you, for businesses that have more than four people, I'm assuming that if you're going to this transformation, you should be pulling your management team together. Then we'll allocate you a transformation mentor just for your business. And you will go through two, two, three, four sessions of personalized mentoring with that mentor to work on your transformation plan, get into the detail, validate the information, and put in the, put in the detail with the help of our transformation mentor. So by end of the bootcamp, seven days later on, you would have developed a digital transformation plan validated by industry expert, which is a mentor that brings together. So that's how we actually deliver our program. So if you think about what we are doing, obviously we provide some training, right? That's the first eight hours, but the transformation insight sharing and transformation mentoring, this is almost like a consultant. It's no different. You have an essential consultant that's sitting through with you, uh, reviewing your content and, and giving you advice how you can sharpen up your, your plan. So by combining that, you actually get a business outcome, right? And this whole course only costs about $500 because the government funded 90%. And when I talk about 500, it includes GST per headcount. So something that probably takes six months to do, and we do that in seven days and for a fraction of the cost. Uh, these are the details. So, I'm going to round up my talk with this uh, funding and grants. Everything that I talk about in terms of formulating the business model, which is the developing of, development of the transformation plan, and implementing those digital technology and practices that I talk about to scaling up the workforce with relevant skill that able to support the implementation of those technology and the execution of those business model uh, are all funded. So if you think about it, there are few things that you need in order to support your transformation. First is training. So SSG and WSG uh, have this enhanced training support that is up to 90% cost fee funding. If you need to acquire ready talent, then there is this PCP program and there's a whole load of program that you hear from yesterday's budget. And we are also delivering on that, like some of the mid-career uh, traineeship program. Uh, we are also uh, a CT center that's been mentioned that we deliver this program as well. And many of this talent acquisition come with salary funding. So the PCP program allow you to not just claim 90% of the cost fee, but also up to $6,000 a month of salary for six months for this individual if they are more than 40 years old. If they are below, you get about 70%. Um, so that's talent. Third, you need technology, right? Um, so we are still trying to absorb the information from yesterday. If you are to set up your digital workplace, on top of the training that I'm talking about, I think yesterday uh, there were these uh, $500 million that support the digital workplace uh, technology implementation from payment. 
to in fact the first the payment was small amount of money but the second one is two thousand five hundred dollars for 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 e-payment procurements technology uh, accounts invoicing and all that and actually the third portion which they call it a, so, uh, a more sophisticated uh, implementation is actually data analytics every businesses need to be able to analyze that data that's five thousand so when you stack all this together it's actually more than ten thousand right and you can so we we have a program called modern workplace that MQs encapsulate all the skill that uh so a lot of this technology is funded uh up to 70 percent up to thirty thousand uh that the government is providing in fact uh this chart is be done before yesterday so so I'm not even sure right now, right? But what's very sure is that it's almost free. I don't think you are paying for anything this day when you try to transform. So um, I've fin finished my presentation. Uh, usually I talk for two hours and only one speaker for such session. But today uh, we wanted to actually uh, share um, more detailed plan because whatever I talk about has been still generally at the higher level. When I talk about a plan, I talk about uh, a business model. But we have the opportunity today to have Colleen. Colleen um, um, come from the industry and the manufacturing sector. And um, so he's going to share with you if you are from manufacturing the industrial sector, how could you digitize your business? Holly, take over. Colleen, are you there? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, control okay. is to you, Colleen. Okay. Sure. Mm. Colleen? Yeah, okay. Can you uh, throw my slide? Uh, yeah, I put it on. You can take over the control. I had made you the presenter now. Okay, thank you. We can't hear you, Colin. Are you if you're uh, Yeah, I'm trying to get hold to the Can you hear me now? Yes, I we can hear you. Okay. Uh can you put on the slide? Yes, the slides are on. Okay. You need to use the next tab, which is uh, your slide. Share, yeah, is it? No, you need to use the next tab. I'm opening the slides for you, yes. Oh, okay, now? Okay, okay. Good. that's good. Okay. Your camera is not on if you want. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Colin? Okay, I think the uh, the camera something not right. So maybe I can just speak from here. Yes, continue, please. Okay. Uh, okay, thanks, uh, Leslie, for the comprehensive uh, content in terms of the uh, Lipton perspective. So uh, I think today I want to share uh, some framework that uh, so allowed to enhance uh, all the contents that uh, Leslie has spoken about. Um, I will be focusing on manufacturing uh, perspective, but I think this framework will be used in all kinds of business. Uh, as you know that um, in any business, the only three components, you have the input, you process it, and you have the output, right? So the three components are the same. It's only manufacturing. They are more deal with physical product, tangible product. But a lot of business in the services, you actually produce intangible product. You know? So I like to go through. So I think all of you have heard uh, this uh, industry for in the last couple of years. And uh, I think uh, in manufacturing perspective, uh, we see a lot of Singapore companies already embarked on this journey. I will talk about that later. Okay, so you look at the industry from industry 1.0 to 4.0, there are a lot of uh, changes. In fact, uh, one of the very obvious change is the supply chain. So later I'll explain uh, why that affects the supply chain as well as how people buy and sell product and how the digital technology and digital economy is where we are in now play a major part. And I hope that uh, some of this uh, uh, information will be useful to you. So if you look at the industry um, 1.0 to 4.0, they are using different technologies, right? Uh, whenever there's a new technology come on board, there will be a lot of disruptions in terms of the in the perspective of manufacturing, we have go through three major transformation, and now we are entering into the fourth. Uh, the first three, frankly speaking, to me is more like evolution rather than a transformation. But becoming industry 4.0, because of the exponential growth of and also the a lot of this emerging technology, actually they come together at one time. And this is basically well allowed a lot of this technology to be merged, converged, and complement each other to do a much better in terms of producing quality, productivity, and also the efficiencies. And I think one of the uh, area that um, Leslie has talked about is the transformation actually will create a lot of new businesses and also will disrupt a lot of new business, uh, old business. So this is very important for us to know. Okay, I think you know that the Singapore uh, in 2016, uh, Singapore have rolled out a ITM, so-called Industry Transformation Map. This map, I think, is very helpful in terms of uh, the SME sector. In fact, in before 2016, uh, our government already realized the productivity among the SME is relatively low as compared with big multinational company and large company. So government actually set a target that we want to have one or two percent productivity growth, right, for the next 10 years. Uh, setting is uh, before this um, ITM rollout, uh, in 2015, actually, we have a negative growth. So, uh, so to ensure that this ITM map will be successful, government put in a lot of effort, and those SME actually embarked on this program in early 2016. They are seeing the result now. In fact, 
a lot of them, they are able to manage this COVID-19 very well because most of them already being digitized or in the, in the process of being uh, transformed their businesses. So this is a one map that the Singapore government have uh, tried to encourage. And it consists of 23 industries, right? From services to manufacturing and some other uh, uh, business that comprises of a whole economy. And government have actually committed 4.5 billion to ensure this program is being developed fully so that the, they will uh, benefit not only SME, I think the big, uh, large company, they also can learn a lot of things from this ITM programs. The 23 industry, uh, government had actually further cluster them into six clusters. Why clustering? I think, as you know, that clustering concept is not new. In fact, clustering concept has been around for the last 30, 40 years. If industry are not clustered together, first thing first is they were not able to have a common infrastructure. And because of that, the efficiency will be lower. And Moving forward, I think clustering also provides a lot of business opportunities for those people who want to develop products and services for certain clusters. Uh, as you know, there are different clusters and different domain. They have different business practices and different technology uh, have to be utilized to ensure that the cluster will be more efficient. So I think this is one area that uh, I like to highlight the clustering effect and the manufacturing is actually one part of a very important uh, segment in our economy. As you know that Singapore have almost close to 25% of GDP come from manufacturing. That include the fiscal manufacturing of product and also the, all the services that support the manufacturing. So it's a very important cluster for us. Uh, but as you know that um, Manufacturing is uh, quite complex, so to do a better job, uh, I think government also try to look for some framework that we can uh, copy or we can learn from. So there are a few framework, for instance, the European, they come up with Industry 4.0 framework. The USA, they come up with the Industrial Internet Consortium framework. And also I think the Japan, they also come out with their own framework. But we realize that some of these frameworks are too academic and also very difficult for uh, our SME to understand. So the EDB have actually decided to invest and engage an international consultant to come out a program. And that framework is called the series. I will talk about it later on. Okay, so the four pillars of the industry transformation map uh, consists of productivity, job and skill, innovation, trade and internalization. So I think Leslie has talked about a lot of the job and skill, innovation, as well as productivity. So I, I think this uh, session is very useful. Uh, so after the Leslie explanation, uh, at, I think you, all of you know that uh, Litton can provide a very holistic and comprehensive training to upskill and reskill your workforce. So I want to go a bit deeper into this so-called the Singapore Industry Singapore Smart Industry Readiness Index. So if you look at that, uh, of course the contents are geared towards manufacturing. But if you look at the title, Smart Industry, this says that any industry can be smart, but how you know that in terms of your level of smart, in order for you to have a cell assessment. So this framework, you know, the developed by series in 2017, all of you can actually download, you Google it and you type uh, EDB series, you are able to actually download a full PDA, PDF, a colorful, uh, 
uh, assessment uh, index uh, brochure or so called the documents. I want to talk about the big difference in terms of industry 3.0 and 4.0. In manufacturing context, uh, in the last three industrial revolutions, uh, we are very focused on the factory floor and the manufacturing plant itself. Um, so you can see a lot of this technology in the uh, factory floor are not really um, following the IT uh, technologies. We have a lot of uh, so-called the OT technology or called manufacturing technologies. Uh, but in industry 3.0, we see some of the more advanced companies, they are actually linked up their operational technology with the IT, which is, for instance, the ERP layer. But by itself, it's still very isolated as a plant. This is where the industry 3.0 manufacturing plant uh, uh, was set down. But if you look at the industry 4.0, it's a big shift in a way that the manufacturing will be plugged into the end-to-end -end supply chain, right? From your raw materials, from your partners, logistics, productions, all the way from your channels, you know, it could be physical channel, it could be digital channels. So there's a big shift in terms of the way the whole ecosystem is being organized. If you look at industry 3.0, we realize that a lot of times, manufacturing company, they are actually built to stock. And from there, they push the channel and use very strong sales and marketing programs to push the product to the market. That was the industry 1.0 to 3.0 in terms of the way that the manufacturing is being done. And because of that, there are a lot of wastage in the supply chain. From the IHL research, IHL is a very famous uh, world a global research company looking into supply chain technologies. They realized that almost 1.1 1, 1 trillion was lost due to the supply chain distortion. And according to them, in 2015, the cost of overstocking was 470 billion and cost of understocking was 630 billion. What is 1.1 trillion? This is almost equivalent to the GDP of Indonesia. So there were a lot of wastage. The reason is being there's no visibility in terms of the supply and demand. And this is also the problem because the technology wasn't matured allowed for them to have a full end-to-end -end visibility. And that will change uh, if the industry 4.0 and also the digital transformation is being done properly. So now we are looking at Instead of push, now we are looking at a demand pool. If you realize that maybe the last five years, a lot of customers, they are able to communicate with the manufacturer directly. That's to say that they not only can buy online, at the same time, they also can provide feedback online. In a way that the moment they use a product, if the product is good, they will give a very good comment. And, and this comment is being seen by all the consumers, all the potential consumers. And because of that, the manufacturer have to take this opportunity to see how can they pull all this information back to the plant in order for them to do a product design, production, how much to stock, how much to plan both the upstream and downstream. So we are entering into a true economy in terms of the consumption. How to do it? As I said, the industry 3.0 was actually relied on a lot of um, old technology. And industry 4.0 actually comprises of many, many advanced technologies 
not only advanced, but I think most of these technology are very affordable in the way that in the 3.0 uh, scenario, only a lot of big companies, they can invest in technologies. But I think coming the uh, era, I would say that uh, even the SMB, they are able to buy all this advanced technology at a very cost-effective way. The problem is how can they select the right technology? How can they embed into their business process? I think that's a key. So as I say that once, if they are able to embed all these technologies into their productions, into their services, I think uh, we can see a lot of wastage will, will be, uh, can be safe. And also because of that, the cost of product will be cheaper and better. Because in the past, if you have so much wastage in your supply chain, actually the cost actually is bare by the, by the consumer. At the same time, you also bear by the manufacturer themselves. So I want to go into this so-called the Singapore Smart Industry Readiness Index of what we call it series. Okay, this, in this uh, framework, if you look at them, um, as I say that not only manufacturing company can adopt. In fact, a lot of these SME or services companies, they can use this framework Basically, this framework allows each and individual company to do a cell assessment in a way that how do you know the whole company infrastructures, right? Right from your suppliers to your manufacturing plant to the customer. This framework actually provides three building blocks, process, technology, and organizations. And they bring into, supported by eight pillars and 16 dimensions. 16 dimension is where all the micro area that you have to assess. It. And you will have a self understanding in terms of what level of digital, digitization that you have achieved. By talking to a lot of industry experts, <clears throat> we realize that uh, th there are some priorities that all the companies need to set uh, because you cannot do everything at one go. We encourage people to look at the organizations at the first step because organization is very important because it consists of all your talents, all your infrastructures, right? And also your internal um, processes. If you are able to have a very good internal processes and a very good uh, so-called talent uh, and also your workforce, I think it's very easy for you to move to other areas. So this is where I think the learning and uh, development play a very important role. And also, I think Litton have given a lot of training on the leadership as well, so that the leader will understand what kind of a digital transformation is needed in their respective company. So we encourage uh, you to spend more effort in terms of understanding your company, uh, so-called the digital confidence in all your workforce. From there, you go to the processes. As I said, the industry 3.0 and 2.0, the processes uh, was based on old technologies. So with all the new technology, you can actually look at the processes. Can they be enhanced? Or some of them, you can even eliminate them, right, to reduce costs. So once you're able to understand your processes, right, in terms of your vertical processes, in terms of your horizontal processes, from there, you people will know, okay, what kind of technology or what kind of digital, uh, digital, uh, the so-called uh, technology can be embedded in your processes. With that, we know that sometimes by improving your processes, you can save a lot of money. We have experience in some of even our manufacturing customers. Uh, once they look at the processes, it's uh, old, old-fashioned processes. But because 
there were no technology to improve them. But now they find a lot of these new digital tools can actually improve the processes. By just doing that, in fact, they don't need to spend much money. You just rearrange or reconfigure the process. They can save a lot of cost. From there, then you look at how to use the automations, right, to automate some of the parts that now still being handled by humans. So we look at uh, automation in two form. First is hard automation. So in manufacturing wise, we are looking at productions, we are looking at the production uh, equipment, the production lines and all that. So those are, we will require a lot of robots, things like that. But at the services side, I think there's, uh, you can use RPA, right? Robot process, uh, processes to automate your, some of the processes. So by understanding your people have a confidence in terms of digital confidence. Uh, from there, you look at your processes, you embed the right technologies to improve further. So I think this is what we think uh, if you want to do the, the assessment, you, after looking at all the assessment, you prioritize yourself and you, you plan yourself in terms of how to do these three steps. I want to also bring up one of the uh, phenomena, right? I think all of you know that um, there's a such thing called global supply chain. So if you look at the global supply chain, actually they have three types of um, countries that actually adopt these technologies. Those very advanced countries, they tend to do very high value very intent, uh, high in, uh, intelligent and also a lot of uh, uh, intelli uh, this uh, uh, IT kind of uh, work. So as you know that even you buy a high, uh, uh, iPhone, only less than 10% is actually end up in the manufacturing. The rest is all the branding, all the design, right? And all the marketing and the distributions. So we see actually if the SME, can adopt a lot of these digital technologies, they should be able to bring up their value chain in the way that they will not only make those very low profit margin activity. They actually can gain or rather upgrade their value chains, right? To provide a better product and they have also better margin. So we are looking at how the company both the SME especially, they should take this opportunity to look at how can they digitally transform and make use of all this technology to improve their value and also improve their profit. Uh, this is a, a graphical chart that talking about manufacturing flaw. Uh, but if you look at them, a lot of these are services that actually embed inside this uh, so-called industry 4.0 ecosystems. So a lot of technology can be used, right? Uh, so for instance, we are looking at the supply chain. Um, if you realize uh, during this period, the eco, uh, this uh, COVID-19 uh, situations, uh, a lot of uh, supply chain actually was disrupted. And a lot of company in the past uh, do not pay attention to supply chain. I think they are suffer uh, because even you have a very good internal system, but you still rely a lot of your input, for instance, your raw materials, or even some of the, the services that you want to get. The moment you are not digitized, currently you are unable to get all these services. And the other thing is, if you do not have a very good visibility of your supply chain, it's very difficult even you want to do things this on, on a distant basis because there's no visibility. So, Connectivity moving forward and the supply chain visibility, visibility is very important. So there are few technology that actually allow this to happen. So for instance, uh, people will look at, uh, in fact, uh, there's one uh, technology that now up and coming in terms of the manufacturing uh, and also the services is the blockchain, right? So blockchain, as you know, that uh, is developed uh, by the distributed uh, ledger, 
the first application actually is Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is just one of the application of blockchain. Uh, in fact, we are looking at a lot of these blockchain technologies can be used in supply chain, can be used in the manufacturing, can be used in the track and trace, right? And this is one of the technologies coupled with the up and coming 5G technology. They will actually transform the whole ecosystem. So all these up and coming technology, frankly speaking, they are not very expensive. But the thing is, how can you leverage on them to embed into your business processes and your ecosystems? I want, just now I talked about the, the push and pull. Um, in the past, I think um, there are a lot of information and also a lot of customer feedback is very difficult to get, right? But as I say that because of the social media and also a lot of this um, uh, digital platform, uh, you are able to get all this information from customer directly or indirectly. So for instance, the social listening and how you apply the AI to analyze the customer preference, right? To anticipate the demand so that you don't have an overstock or under, understock problems. Uh, are you able to coordinate with your suppliers, your vendors, your partners, as well as your channel partners to ensure that you're able to get the real-time information you are able to provide your product and services in real time, and the customer at the same time, they will have a very high level of uh, user experience, right? So I think these are a few things that the Industry 4.0 can bring to the, the ecosystems. And I want to talk about, in terms of the customer engagement, I think a lot of times, uh, in especially our B2B business, um, we ask our salespeople to to sell the product, right? So even some uh, solution sales to the customers. Uh, I, I find that uh, this is not going to uh, benefit um, to company, both the supplier and the, and, the, and the consumer. Because you know that even the customer, when, whenever they want to buy a product, uh, actually they, are, they will do their own research, either the desktop or they will check the social media or the feedback platform, things like that. And even they can understand the product very well. So information, solution, uh, technologies, they are quite well versed before they want to buy from you. So the B2B or even B2B, B2C, the, uh, the sales and marketing approach have to upgrade from product sales to solution sales. I think you, you shouldn't stop there, right? You should go into consultations in a way that you should help customer to select the product and the services that fit them. Uh, but I think a uh, higher level is you should even educate your customers. Uh, educated customer, I think, is a, is a lifetime customer for you because they have trust in you. They know that you are not pushing a product, but you are able to educate them in terms of their business. I'm sure that all the suppliers, you know your product very well. You, don't, you know the domain very well. You can share some of these best, best practices to your customers. So I think they will appreciate what you have done. So as I mentioned, uh, there are a few things going to happen, right? Uh, we have enjoyed the 2G, 3G, 4G, and upcoming 5G. Uh, there's a big difference between uh, 4G and 5G, right? Uh, I think all of you know that in terms of speed, the 5G is almost 20 times faster than 4G. And in terms of the latency, latency meaning the response. i give you one, one example. For instance, now, um, when you touch your body, your brain takes almost 50 to 100 milliseconds to realize that, that feeling, that perception. But the 5G, the speed is one millisecond. So there's a big difference. So remote monitoring, remote operations, it become reality rather than uh, science fiction. And you don't forget, if your company is going to be around 10 years uh, later, you know that by 2030, 70% of our workforce actually are millennials. And these are digital natives. If, you are unable, if your workforce are not ready to attract them to work for you, if your product and services are not digitized, I wouldn't think you'll be in a business. I think this is uh, very obvious uh, in terms of uh, how we conduct the business in the coming uh, era. Uh, look at company the organization structure, I think we need to optimize it. 
in the past, I think we have all the workforce with us and we almost do everything in-house. Uh, I think that doesn't work anymore. It's become very expensive. The reason is all these are fixed costs. So you have to really reduce your fixed cost. At the same time, you're still able to conduct your business in a more modern way. So uh, there's a actually a model that come out by Australian uh, researcher. Uh, they suggest that you should have 60% of permanent, permanent staff, which is your core talent. Actually, these are people you well-trained, uh, digital uh, confidence, are uh, able to engage with the customer, right? And from there, the rest of processes, you should invest in technology, whether it's a hard automation or soft automation, right? improve your processes, improve your marketing, improve your engagements, right? Then the another 20%, you should work on the gig economy, right? I think, for instance, you need certain uh, very special uh, uh, so-called uh, skill. I don't think you need to bring in uh, uh, in-house because uh, this will be very expensive and I think you only do it once in a while. I think this is better you outsource to the gig uh, economy or rather we call the freelancers. So I think this is a way to go, right? So I find that this model is very good in a way, especially for the SME. You want to uh, remain agile, you want to remain cost effective. I think there's a way moving forward. Um, let's look at the, the, um, the digital uh, transformation. I, to me, I think it, it, we, when we look, we, we work with uh, all these manufacturing company, this is what always uh, advise them. We tell them that uh, you should do the first step is digitization in a way that you have to look at where are your data, where are your assets, do they still using manual, do they still record in a spreadsheet, do they still use all these analog devices to clock and, and track all these things. If possible, you should all digitize them because the moment you digitize them, it's very easy to scale up. The moment you are in analog or paper base, there's no way you can scale up. For instance, for instance, now, how can you even want to send a, a part of the document overseas? It's very difficult now. But if you digitize them, they can get it real time. With all the data, I think you should look at how all this data can be connected, right? To ensure your process is end-to-end -end connected, uh, to ensure that all the silo uh, processes now are able to uh, so-called integrate so from there, you have a better in visibility. You know where is the bottleneck, where are, where are the wastage. Uh, even you can look at some of the processes can be innovate, become a product or, or services that we can sell uh, to the market. And I think uh, once you have uh, digitalization, your processes, <clears throat> you have this size of your data and assets, uh, one opportunity is you can look at real digital transformation. So uh, what's the difference between the digital transformation and uh, so-called uh, uh, just a digital uh, uh, technologies? Uh, transformation really transform the way you do business. Uh, not only your businesses, even you can think of some of the new business model that you can, you can embark on. So uh, never start with the 3.0 mindset. 4.0 actually give you a lot of opportunities. So I think uh, you, your people need to really be trained and holistic training I think is very important. So I have, uh, understand the, the Litton have a very good uh, so-called uh, technology and training, right? You can, uh, I think your leadership need to be trained. Your internal uh, so-called the, the worker need to be trained and also your processes and all your infrastructure need to be digitized. And I think uh, the Litton are able to help uh, all of you. I think one good thing is also Litton is being uh, fully supported by government. So a lot of your this digital transformation, actually you can do it at a very, very low cost. So I want to cite one uh, example. I think I know this company has uh, been around for the last uh, over 60 years. Uh, from a small shop in Jalan Besar selling electrical uh, items, selling to, to the factory, selling to the buildings, and things like that. But I think they have actually uh, very profitable because they are very customer-centric, right? <clears throat> and uh, 
and they are very uh, innovative in the way that from time to time they try to em uh, embed all this uh, latest technology into their business processes. So I think uh, 60 years uh, anniversary in 2018, they have embarked on this uh, so-called the, the B2B e-commerce business. And I think they are trying to even uh, ensure this uh, uh, portal business not only can serve the Singapore uh, market, but also the regional market. And I think they, are, they are, have ongoing uh, improvement and ongoing embedding the latest technology into the portal. Uh, to ensure that um, customer can buy online, uh, frictionless, and customer can have a good experience, and a lot of contents will be in the portal to educate the customer. And from there, they also have very um, seamless uh, physical infrastructure to deliver the product. If those products are, are hardware, but if it's the services of first online, uh, portal can provide that. So I think this is one of the good examples that uh, I know uh, this company, I think it's called Linkim High Electric, and I think the portal is called the uh, elego.com. You all can take a look at it. So uh, I think this is a good uh, example in terms of how a small SME, right, able to uh, survive, right, for 60 over years, and they are still continuing innovating themselves. They are still trying to embed whatever is up to date, whatever is good for customer, Whatever that to maintain the ecosystem up and running. So I think uh, my last word is be positive, be ready. And I think that uh, during this good time, I think probably you can uh, spend more time to train your people to make sure that your workforce uh, digital confidence. And from there, I think uh, the rest are just processes and technologies. Uh, without human being, I think a lot of things will not happen. So I think this is what. Uh, my sharing with uh, all of you. So, in fact, uh, uh, my myself and one of my uh, friends have uh, uh, come out this product. So, this product uh, allowed um, uh, this uh, so-called the the book uh, allowed the industry uh, manufacturing company to understand some of this uh, basic knowledge. Okay, I think that's what I want to share. Uh, take over, please, uh, Leslie. Okay, um, we have come to the end of the session, which is uh, we're going to have uh, open Q&A. Um, there is a Q&A uh, where you can click on and submit your questions, and we will uh, serve up the questions to the two speakers. Uh, you can address them either to Leslie, to Colin, or to both speakers, okay? Give us a few minutes, we'll be coming online. Um, Leslie, uh, would you like to take some of the questions as well? Uh, we'll be serving up in a couple of minutes time. Leslie, you are in mute. Okay, uh, first question um, is to Leslie. Uh, companies in retail industry are badly affected in this COVID-19 period. Companies have no choice but to digitally transform quickly. What can retail companies do and how can Leeton help? This from Jack. Leslie? Leslie, I think your, your speaker is still on mute. Okay, I think we have a bit of an uh, issue here. Uh, let me then switch the next uh, question to uh, Colin. Colin, this Colin, next question goes to you. Okay. Hello. Hello. 
Uh, yeah, okay. So this next question goes to you. Uh, you mentioned that 1.1 billion is lost due to lack of supply chain visibility. Uh, you did cover uh, some of the gaps, but where is this gap mostly? And how can we close this gap with smart technology? This is from Rodney. Okay, I think, um, as I mentioned, I think in the past, uh, the supply chain visibility is very poor, right? So when you have a poor visibility, you tend to do a lot of buffering, right? So buffering meaning you will be uh, overstock, right? So this is uh, one of the, the issues that uh, the wastage is there. So you know that whenever you have a product overstock, either you scrap it or you sell it at very, very low cost. So, and also there is also a loss in terms of the resources. Um, the other thing is, uh, you, if you do not have a good visibility, you sometimes cannot anticipate the demand. So when there is a surge of demand, your products are not there to meet the customer requirements. So I think this is one of the big issues in the old supply chain technologies. Uh, but I think we see um, some light at the end of the tunnel. So we understand that uh, a lot of these supply chain uh, companies, uh, rather uh, in terms of some of these uh, research companies, they actually have um, uh, a promote the using of um, some of this AI technology. I, I think you know that uh, once you have a good uh, data, so the important thing is you must have uh, uh, data right in, in place, right? So once you have all these big data, you can actually use uh, AI. In fact, a lot of this uh, advanced, advanced AI able to do predictions, right? The predictions can be on different levels. So I think, for instance, um, prediction in terms of the, the supply and also in terms of the demand, right? So, um, so what I what I suggest is uh, look at some of these um, uh, supply chain technology that come on board uh, very soon in the market. Um, AI play a very important role in terms of data analytics, right? So I think this is uh, one of the solutions that able to solve all these so-called 1.1 trillion wastage in the supply chain. Over to you. Sorry, um, Salil, we need some help here. I think there's some echo at the back. Sir, sir, then uh, Leslie can answer the question. Uh, Leslie. Yeah. Understand. Uh, I think there's uh, some speakers still. Uh, yeah, Colin and Kate. Uh, uh, <clears throat> this question is for Leslie. Uh, Leslie. Uh, Companies in the retail industry are badly affected in this COVID-19 period. Companies have no choice but to digitally transform quickly. What can retail companies do and how can they turn Um Yeah, okay. So, um, in fact, a lot of government initiatives, including what was announced yesterday, was really meant for more the consumer, the uh, SME focused type of uh, businesses. Clearly retail uh, is included, right? So for retail, definitely is really about uh, extending the channel that you have. Um, uh, I'm assuming that you might not have gone digital yet, right? So certainly you need to go omni-channel, which means you need to have your conventional uh, shop front, but you also want to be able to uh, digitally engage your customer. So all the things that you need down there are things like uh, digital marketing, making sure you set up a web store. So one of the things that we spoke about uh, just now uh, is about getting you to launch your online sales in, um, in seven days, right? So inside, actually, there are two two things that you need to get trained on. 
The first is to set up your online store. So there's this, uh, so we, we provide training to either set up your own landing page or your online store. Um, if you decide to actually want to create, use uh, uh, Shopify, Shopify is what we provide that training. Uh, after that, then we train you on uh, digital marketing, but uh, focusing on uh, Facebook marketing, because that's uh, mainly the retail channel. Um, so, so that's the one that uh, collectively it can be done um, over about 10 days in total, the training. But we would have by the seven day launch the web store as well as your campaign. Then the subsequent uh, seven days, which is for us to help you to optimize your campaign, review the result, and ensure that it actually do the job that it's supposed to do. That's a, that's one part of it. It depends on your, clearly, uh, there are perhaps more that you need to do, such as uh, including the, the data analytics so that you better understand your customer. So in fact, uh, the budget announcement yesterday, there were like, I think 12, $10,000, $12,000 uh, funding that available on top of this. I mean, whatever that I, I talk about, right? The one in seven days, um, already funded 90% by the uh, Skill Future Singapore or by the uh, uh, Enterprise Singapore. But now the other 10,000, we need to figure out how uh, it works, uh, but we can certainly follow up with you and share with you specifically what you need to do, how you can leverage on that. Okay, thanks. Um, there's another question for Leslie. This is from Regina Chua. I thought you mentioned the team is equipped for e-learning and online. Um, we have a three-person team using outsource associates for our training and consultancy business. Would the mentoring be suitable for us? Average team, average age of our team and associates are 50 plus. What do we need to prepare before considering signing up for this program? Leslie? Um. Actually, can uh, can I get more specific on the question? Uh, maybe you could put her um, Virginia, is it or Virginia? Um, yeah, Virginia Chua, right? Uh, Virginia Chua. Yeah. yeah uh, I, would you like I, to I, speak to the mic? Uh, we will turn your mic on. Thanks, Leslie. Yes. Yeah. Regina, you're on. Okay, so so if she can't get access to that, is um, I, it wasn't very clear uh, which areas of training that you wanted to consider. Uh, the what I spoke about just now were firstly there's this thing called digital transformation bootcamp. So the digital transformation bootcamp. Um, would be the, what I, I share with you at the end of the seven day, you actually get a um, digital transformation bootcamp that include your digital business model as well as the technology roadmap uh, included in the transformation plan. And from, so it depends on your business. If your business, uh, if, if it's quite clear, right, all you need is really to launch your online sales as an example. Then we can move straight into uh, the other launch your online sales in seven days um, package, right? So, um, so if you have three people, I think three, four people would be enough for us to dedicate a mentor to help you to execute that uh, plan. Let's see. Uh, I think Regina Chow couldn't come to the mic because her background is quite noisy, but she has asked me to convey this. Her question is more related to Digital Acceleration Bootcamp. I, I think it's a di the Transformation Bootcamp that you mentioned just now. Okay, okay. So so I think three is fine, not, not a problem. So we can, uh, so 
Um, can you ask Virginia what business sector she comes from? So um, it's in consulting and yeah. trading. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, I think we can have a chat with her. See which one is more appropriate because if the business is if it's clear enough, right? Must well jump into straight into executing the the plan rather than coming up with a plan. So we can go into a little bit more discussion. Uh, Ken Singh will follow up with you. And then we, we, we put a solution because at the end of the day, you have an objective, right? So if, if it's clear that uh, as a training and consulting business, what you want to build in terms of capability is in terms of um, be able to sell and market your solution. I think there is this two or three module that we could put together that we can put you through that program so that you can launch your online sales, right? For your business. The second part is that if you are talking about transforming your training piece of the business, uh, then I think it really depends on how deep you are going uh, to try to do that. So we'll have a chat with you and see how it can be done. Dina, uh, we will get back to you about this. Yeah. Um, there's one more question. Um, this one has to do with, uh, it's from Farhat, and I believe this is uh, meant for Leslie. How does Leeton's program uh, work around RPA? Yeah, okay, so robotic process automation. Okay, so a lot of the technology that Leeton adopt are Microsoft technology, right? So Microsoft technology have a full integrated suite of solution that support the various pillar that I talk about. One of them is the modern workplace solution. So the modern workplace solution, uh, so we have come up with the solution. Firstly, we, um, if as a business you need to set up the digital workplace, the first thing you need to do is to implement Microsoft team, right? So um, so that can be part and parcel of the two days um, training, which include not just team, but also holistically about the other digital technology. Then you can go into um, RPA, which is uh, using Microsoft Automate to streamline the processes within your company. Because there are many, many processes that you probably have, but the, these processes are not connected to the application. So Automate is actually a tool that you as a non-technical user could use to simply to connect the, the processes. Let's say, for example, um, you have a call center person, you, you use a spreadsheet to um, capture all the information that your call center person capture about a uh, prospect name and information. Then after that, you upload this into your system, right, periodically. But you could have write a very simple uh, uh, program uh, that upload this automatically at a specific time of the day. So Automate would help you to do that. Uh, so that's one of the module that um, Automate is a robotic process automation application uh, that we deliver. So that, that's something that we can uh, support. Okay, yes, sir. Yep, uh, Zahid has a couple of questions uh, coming up. Zahid? Okay, hi. Hi, Leslie. Uh, there's a question for you from, uh, let me see. Here. There's a question from me, uh, from you from Kuripa. The question is, most companies lack of expertise to lead, lack of expertise to lead digitization initiatives. What can a company do to ensure that they have the right talent to lead digital transformation efforts? Yeah. Um, so, 
Um, on the third part of my presentation, I talk about how you can build a digital workforce uh, and to, sub, to deliver agility and uh, scalability of resources. So essentially, um, what we can do in for your instance is to actually uh, meet up, uh, catch up with you, to get a feel of your goal as a business, right? What do you want to do? to achieve in terms of your business outcome, right? So it really depends on your business because for each of your business, you would have different resources. Yeah. And we know for each of those resources, they need to get skilled up. They need to get, they need, we need to bridge them with digital skill, right? Let's say, for example, um, uh, you need to actually create, a, you need to streamline your business processes because there are too many uh, different systems that do not get, it's not connecting uh, properly at this stage. So we would then have identified for this job, this operation person, right? He should get, he or she should get skilled up with robotic process automation skill, which is a 60 hour skill. Uh, training that enable him to deliver that uh, connection between your process, right? So that, so, so by understanding, first of all, your business, by understanding the goal that you have, then what we can do is that we look at your resources and we will try to establish we will establish a learning, uh, we, would, uh, we would establish what is the gap he got in his digital and uh, technology skill. Then we put together a learning plan that map to bridge his digital, his or her digital skill. We can uh, walk through with you and help you to do that. So our training is very comprehensive from, as an example, you as a leader, right? You as a leader, what you need is, at the end of the day, know enough to come up with a digital transformation plan. But having said that, depending on the business, on your size of the business, you might want to also drill in, right, into certain of the skill that you need for execution, right? So then we can identify that as well, depending on on your job role as well as your business, right? Because um, there are different levels of depth that you want your people to do uh, the type of skill that they, they need. So, so we can go through that process with you to create that uh, skill gap and the learning plan corresponding for that skill gap. Thank you, Leslie. Um, I have another question here for you. Uh, it's from uh, Sandy. Sandy asked this question. Uh, he, he mentioned that I need a small clarification. Students who have already undergone PCT program, uh, for example, uh, professional diploma in digital marketing course, how can they get to benefit from this digital transformation bootcamp program in terms of funding support? Um, okay, so if you are, okay, the PCP program work on the basis that um, you try to transition into a specific job to become a digital marketer for digital marketing, right? So there are six modules already pre-configured so that you would get those module trained, which incidentally uh, exclude the digital leadership skill that the digital transformation bootcamp would deliver to you, right? So it would not be included inside, but always I think you, if you are part of the PCP candidate yourself, you could always tell your employer to say that, you know, can I also attend this particular bootcamp? Because given that your employer is, uh, can, he can sponsor you, then you get the 90% funding and all that in any case as an add-on to your digital marketing skill that you have. You can also do that, yeah. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, By the way, there are many. Just watch watch out for the announcement. Uh, yesterday there were very big announcement, right, about the uh, SG United skill training. So um, and and we are one of those training provider, and we will be announcing ourselves a certain type of uh, cluster of skill. Like one of it is a modern workplace skill that I spoke about. So, uh, so some, so, so the, and they are going to even strengthen further, not just actually funding you ninety percent of the cost, uh, either as an individual or as an enterprise. They are actually paying uh, the government actually paying allowance, right? Uh, I think thousand two hundred dollars a month for the training. Uh, I'm assuming that you need to be an employee. So things like that. I think uh, certainly there will be a lot more coming out that and now. Certainly cost not an issue actually. In fact, it becomes an incentive more than a cost. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Leslie, for your answer. Uh, we have uh, one last question actually for now. We have one question for, for Colleen. Uh, the question is about, okay, uh, the question is from Alex. The question uh, is this. You mentioned that new technology like blockchain is being incorporated into manufacturing. Can you please elaborate on how such a technology can assist in financial transactions within the manufacturing industry? Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, I, I think the um, blockchain can be can be used in many uh, applications in manufacturing. Uh, one, um, one of the issues of the manufacturing is the traceability. I think you know that some of the industry, manufacturing industry, the traceability of data is very important. So for instance, or product recall for compliance to standard currently is very difficult to achieve, right? So if you use a traditional blockchain technology, it's also tends to be very slow. We understand that there are some technologies company they develop blockchain technology for certain domain industry, right? So when they have a domain industry, they have an ecosystem partner, right? So all these ecosystem partners, they are in the whole supply chain. So in the past, a lot of these data are also not able to track accurately and also very expensive, right? So. Um, we understand that some of these up and coming blockchain consortium, they are able to help the manufacturing company to set up their own ecosystem by using uh, industrial grade blockchain. What do we mean by industrial blockchain? If you know that the traditional Bitcoin, within one second, you only have about less than 10 transactions. And that is sometimes too slow for manufacturing plants. Um, we are looking at 10 to 100 times faster in terms of the visibility of the blockchain within the consortium. And because of that, all the partners in the ecosystem, they are able to understand, they are able to capture the data on, in the real time. And that data can basically fit back into the, the ERP system and that will be reflected into their so-called the financial report. So this is one of the application that uh, we find that uh, can be used, uh, the blockchain can be used in manufacturing. So of course, uh, a lot of this, if you know that the supply chain consists of few types of uh, uh, flow, one is the, the product flow, fiscal flow, one is the information flow, then the other one is the financial flow, right? So. All these are actually have to work hand in hand. So for instance, let's say you have a financial data, which is not real time, but your product is moving. But how can you capture that data 
when the product is moving along your supply chain, you are able to capture it in real time and that will reflect into your uh, so-called maybe P&L or even your financial data. So I think this is one way where actually um, in a way that uh, streamline the whole supply chain, not only at the product level, but that will also reflect in the, your, your financial data. So I think this is one of the applications. Uh, we see a big uh, opportunities or rather a big applications uh, other than the traditional Bitcoin. I think blockchain is uh, one of the technologies that able to streamline, to cut costs, to ensure the data integrity is there and the security is also very highly uh, being observed. So I think all these are the benefits of using the next uh, generation of the uh, industrial uh, blockchain technology.